Good afternoon. My name is Richard Ben. I'm the Sherwood City Engineer, and I'd like to welcome you to a Hemp Hill Road Improvements informational meeting. We've already heard many comments uh, from the Hemp Hill neighborhood after the right of way was staked out. So this is an informational meeting to communicate to the residents in particular what we have heard and how we have already made some changes that have led to some options for moving ahead. During this meeting, please use the chat feature to submit comments during the meeting. If time allows, we'll recognize as many of you as we can to comment in person. If you have something to contribute that has not already been discussed, hopefully we will have discussed most of the concerns that you have. After the meeting, use the city website to submit your comments or uh, write us a letter and mail it to 31 Shelby Road, Sherwood, Arkansas, zip code 72120. Uh, yes. With me here in the room is uh, Dennis Webb. He just stepped out. He's our Sherwood engineering assistant and uh, GIS specialist. I also have with me Mr. David Barnes, a Hemp Hill resident and a spokesperson for this meeting uh, at my request. And he was gracious to accept the invitation to sit here at the table so that it will hopefully uh, convey to you uh, the sincerity that we have here in our office to have, uh, to wish that we had all of you in person, but uh, we'll do the best we can with this Zoom format. Also on the meeting is uh, in Zoom, uh, no, no, no. attending in Zoom is Donna Roach. She's with OR Colon Associates. OR Colon, or the acronym ORC, is a company that will be contacting each of you that own property on Hemp Hill Road, and you will individually be contacted to discuss the needs of uh, temporary construction easements, or if you're on a corner lot, there will be some additional right of way that's needed. But what we have, a conclusion we've come to now is that we can design the improvements within the existing 50 foot right of way that has been in existence since 1953. Um, the background, our public meeting last year in November last year was very well attended. Uh, there were many written comments that were received in engineering, which uh, led to us dropping the center turn lane feature from the design. About a month ago, Sherwood received a grant for the power line trail. And this is located underneath the Entergy power lines that are about a block east of Hemp Hill. It's a very large facility. And these are very accessible uh, to the Hemp Hill Road uh, uh, community. And this power line trail will be dedicated to multi-use. It'll be a multi-use trail by design, which includes bicycling. And with this major public facility being so close to Hemp Hill Road, it is reasonable for us to consider mitigating the bike lanes to that facility. My personal opinion is that we're at a point now considering we have the power line trail that we can remove the bike lanes from the design. Our mayor, the Honorable Virginia Young, shares in that same opinion. We've discussed it and she is of the same belief that the bike lanes on Hemp Hill are not necessary. Now, after staking out the 55 foot right of way, which is in the design that we currently have, and like I said, we're, we're going to change. But after staking out that 50 foot right of way, residents became aware of the size of the project and immediately began to inform us of the impact of losing the ability to park in one's own driveway. Now, this is a serious matter. 
And we have responded by asking Kraft and Tull to propose three options for us and for the residents to consider. At this time, I'd like to ask Mr. Barnes to comment on uh, his, where he sees that we are in this process. David. Okay, thank you, Richard. Um, and to all the uh, Hempfield Road residents, thanks for uh, joining and uh, uh, glad to be here as a representation of you all. Uh, of course, you know, my wife and I, Sharon, uh, my wife, Sharon and I, we have uh, been residents around this area for 26 years. Our children grew up here in this area, and uh, we, we have the probably much of the same concerns that you all have, um, you know, with your children and everything. We had that years ago as well, when there was some of this uh, that was being brought up. Um, but anyway, I, I think, you know, everybody has a concern with their children down the street. Uh, there's a lot of the uh, things that, uh, the basic concerns that you've voiced, we have voiced, uh, one, that we do not need the bike lanes. I'm grateful that um, they have heard this and they found a way that they can do away with this and put it elsewhere to kind of give some of that space back to us because we are very limited on that street there. Uh, so, um, you know, just that that's one of the concerns that we had is the space that was going to be taken by seemingly something so unnecessary. Uh, also, losing space for... Uh, the necessary parking that we have. I mean, I, and I've talked with Richard and, and he's mentioned some of these things and still I have some concerns with that, with the parking issue as well. I know it's going to be cramped because, you know, I know we're losing that space on the front end for this uh, addition down through there. At the same time, it's just kind of spreading things out, runs everything together. Um, you know, on the side, we lose that yard and I can just see massive concrete drives down through there. But, uh, but, I'm glad that they are giving some considerations to that. Also, another concern is the increased traffic on the street through the neighborhood, uh, which we feel that's not designed for this uh, type of, of traffic through there uh, coming off of Brockington. And I think that's part of the reason this is being developed the way it is because of the growth in the city, especially to the north, north end of us. So that's an, uh, a concern, just getting out of our driveway uh, to, in the mornings to go to work. Uh, the safety concerns of increased accidents due to that, and, and even still the concerns for the tragedy of children being hit and maybe even killed on the street because of so many kids in that neighborhood and bringing that kind of traffic load through there. Um, of course, then we have other concerns with the construction here is the drainage and flooding uh, possibilities. And I, I know that, uh, you know, I know many of you would like to hear uh, some things regarding that as well because you know, the way we sit there on Hemp Hill and developing that up a little bit higher, we have those concerns of you know, that water you know, kind of flooding our, our driveways and different things and, and yards. Also, um, just the burden of the day-to-day -day living of those residents with these modifications uh, being made through there, you know, just kind of having to uh, live with that day-to-day -day and just figuring out, okay, kind of feeling cramped and, uh, just kind of closed up and in, in with these extra things kind of put out there on us. Um, I have talked with uh, both myself and Tyler Gibbs, a neighbor next door, and several other ones of you around there. We've, spoke, we've spoken with you, and uh, I think everybody's kind of on the same page, on the same page with your concerns here. Um, uh, I know that Richard has spoke with me and uh, Tyler as well uh, via email, and I spoke with him in person as well on the phone. So, um, um, you know, I think Richard's looking for ways that he can trim some of this down. I'm grateful for that bike lane, again, uh, being uh, moved else, elsewhere. Um, I think most of us feel that this was not built, uh, designed years ago to accommodate this type of traffic. Uh, we've heard a lot of things after speaking with uh, sending emails and I'm grateful for the uh, council members that did come out uh, and look at the area because looking at it staked out, it became very obvious uh, our concern. So thank you for uh, 
responding to that and coming and looking and some of your uh, thoughts on that and kind of seeing what our concerns were and, and some in agreement with that. You know, there's some that as I kind of measured this out myself and looking at that based on sidewalks, bike lanes and what we're hearing, two sidewalks, I think it is that you're proposing. Okay. Yes. Uh, okay. And then of course, I don't know if there's going to be the great, uh, what I call the grass breaks between the curbing to the sidewalk or they're going to do something else. But looking at that, you know, that's some things that I feel like we could get, gain a little extra space without that as well, the, the grass breaks in there, uh, if there's a way to get around that. I know that we were told, of course, now with the bike lanes being out, um, we were told that uh, by one of our aldermen that we would not be able to park on the along the road with if the bike lanes were not there. Uh, nevertheless, I did look in the areas as well in their particular areas and saw how they're designed. Uh, their properties in those areas don't even take up much as much space as what is proposed here in our neighborhood that's much smaller. Um, there are no bike lanes. They only have one sidewalk, one grass break and uh, you know, and pretty much in both areas that I've, I've looked and even down, uh, I believe it was Indian Bay Drive, uh, the distance that's included with all, all of that, you know, is way less than what, than what is being used in our area. So, you know, there's still some concerns there that would, you know, with this development, development this big. Um, so anyway, I just hope that, uh, you all will give considerations to our residents here and really see our concern of how this is really going to impact us, you know, and I realize that there's a lot of things that you can do because what's on the books can be done, but hopefully find some, maybe some leniency a little bit more that maybe we can uh, do something to accommodate other areas as well. Okay, David, thank you. Uh, we've got our engineers with us, design engineers, and they can address any of the Excuse me. Made. Uh, my name, my name yeah. is Deborah Kiss. We have, excuse me? We have I one. live on the, hey. I live on the corner of Kemp Hill and Maxine. We Did anybody a, say? I'm sorry, we've got everyone muted so that we can get through our presentation, but we'll be uh, hopefully bringing uh, folks in as you can, uh, there's a raise your hand feature on there if you'd like to speak. There's also the chat column that we are watching. So uh, we'll try to get with you in just a moment. I'd like to introduce our engineers of record for the project. Craft and Toll Associates uh, was selected to design the Hemphill Road improvements. We have with us Brad Peterson, who's a uh, roadway design engineer and project design uh, leader for this, and also Julie Kelso, who's a planning consultant uh, for our bike and pedestrian master plan. And uh, I'd like to uh, turn the program over to them so that they can present some of the options that they've developed for us to consider and that we will be asking you to give us your opinion of those three options after the meeting is over by going to our website and using the city's website to make your comments or feel free to write us a letter just like many of you did last year and mail it here to our offices. I'll turn it over to Julie or Brad. Okay, good evening, everyone. Um, as Richard mentioned, my name's Brad Peterson and I'm the project manager and uh, kind of leading the design efforts for the Hemp Hill Road improvements. Uh, Julie and I work in uh, the Craft and Tall office here in Little Rock. She handles more of the planning aspects and I'm more of the engineering and construction documents. So may have met some of you about a year ago at the public meeting and happy to be here tonight to share these additional options that we've come up with. We have some exhibits in a PowerPoint. So if you have video capabilities, uh, you'll be able to see this. And I know the city is recording this meeting and it'll be posted on their website. So if you don't have video tonight, there's an option to go and, and view the recording uh, to kind of refresh your memory as I'm talking of, of what we looked at, or even if some of the information isn't committed to memory tonight, you can go back and review that meeting. 
So to kind of take you back about the reason we look at different options and how we approach the design of the street, we're looking at really various aspects of how that street is going to function once it's improved. Uh, we understand from the beginning that we're working in an existing residential area. Hemp Hill was tabbed to be a collector street, but we've never looked at this as a full collector street design, that there was always a modified aspect of a collector to it. So a modified street section. And that means a more narrow right of way, uh, a tighter design with the street itself, um, providing things like bike lanes that would actually help slow that traffic down. Uh, of course, we're looking at a space in the street itself for everyone to back out of their driveways safely, uh, to provide a buffer on the edge of that travel lane, uh, to help cars back out, uh, to visit your mailbox. Uh, if it's someone walking or riding a bike on the street or children playing in a front yard, there's always a buffer on the edge of that street and to reduce any driveway impacts themselves. It's been mentioned, of course, shorting that. So we kind of have to take that big picture of this street, how it'll function. It's intended to be a collector, but we're gonna make design modifications to not have the full impacts of a collector street. Of course, when we do that, we're going to help slow that traffic down, both at the scale of the street and if we stripe travel lanes, um, we evaluated doing a roundabout about midway uh, through the project right at Cherry and, and a traffic circle that would help slow those cars down. Uh, unfortunately, you know, we are in a tight right away and don't have the room for that. So uh, it, it's something that through enforcement with the police department and signage or on pavement marking uh, are efforts that we can make to help slow that traffic on the street. And a big thing that we look at from the planning processes and, and spilling over to the engineering is accommodating multiple user groups with the roadway. So it's not just the vehicular traffic, it's pedestrians or people walking for recreation, uh, walking a dog, uh, cyclists, um, and, and how they will use the, the street. So keeping all of those things intact, we're not just yielding to any other one user group and making it all for vehicles or all for pedestrians. So that was our objectives with the uh, design. And where we started, and this is, we've kind of broken these exhibits up to north of Short Hill. Uh, this existing kind of applies to the whole street. Uh, but so we're, for example, we're north of Short Hill or Cherry, and this is your existing 50 foot right of way. Uh, and so that 50 foot right away, as Richard mentioned, was established when the subdivision was platted. That's a fairly typical design standard that would go back to uh, even the turn of the century that they would have 50 foot right of way. That's land dedicated to the city uh, for streets, drainage, and utilities when property is platted and into created lots. So that's an old design standard. Um, more modern would be something like a 60 foot right of way or more. So that 50 foot right of way has been there a long time since the, the subdivision was created. That leaves a grassed area between the, the street and the actual property line. Um, but right now it's ditches. Uh, your driveways are in that planting strip. Uh, but it kind of gives us perception that of that 50 feet, only about 20 or 22 feet is um, pavement. So not to split hairs, but we're kind of considering a 10 foot driving lane for uh, one-way traffic. There's gonna be more than 20 feet of pavement likely, but for the purposes of the discussion, we'll say it's 10 foot driving lane. You have some green space on either side, and then you have your setback from your property line to your house or your garage, and that's gonna be roughly 25 feet. So our proposed design, what we came to, um, or what we went to about a year ago after the public meeting, when the, the third lane was removed from the project was acquiring two and a half feet of right of way on each side and placing that uh, sidewalk uh, just inside about a foot and a half inside the new right of way on the west side of the street. Uh, this would leave about a three foot grass strip between that sidewalk and the roadway. There'd be the bike lanes on both sides of the street and 12 foot travel lanes. 
So we're expanding the travel lane, we're leaving a sidewalk uh, for pedestrians, uh, and then adding the bike lanes to accommodate uh, cyclists. And to do all that, that's where the additional two and a half feet on each side of the roadway came from. It would leave roughly 22 and a half feet from the structure of your garage to um, either the right of way, which you'd have more space on the east side of, of like a 10 foot uh, space and maybe close to 25 feet still, about 24 feet from the structure to the sidewalk on the west side. So that, that was our proposed condition and where we are uh, prior to these latest rounds of revisions. Um, Richard mentioned the power line trail. And so if you're not familiar with this, it would follow the Entergy power lines that are about a block off of uh, Hemp Hill Road. So that is uh, one reason to look at removing bike lanes that any uh, cyclists either from Maryland or from Keel Avenue or out of the neighborhood within the neighborhood could use a power line trail upon its full development and we could remove that aspect of the street design. Uh, one thing that we can also look at on this aerial is, uh, you know, short hill drive. It goes um, about a half a block or more north of Cherry and then stops. And north of Short Hill to Maryland, uh, this is privately owned property. There's not a dedicated right of way. There's nothing that's been platted that would allow Short Hill to connect through. Uh, and you would get to the very north end of uh, the Hemp Hill Road neighborhood, and there's there's not a transition, a natural way to connect Short Hill back to Maryland around these existing subdivisions. So uh, that's been discussed at Short Hill and why it wouldn't be uh, adequate connection, and that's part of the reason it is there's not a dedicated right of way today for Short Hill to continue uh, to the north. Uh, but this gives you an idea of where that would be. Uh, so again, just kind of review of where we started with a 50 foot existing right of way. Um, and our first option for modifying this design would be to keep the 10 foot travel lanes in, in lieu of going to 12 foot travel lanes and they're providing just a three foot buffer outside the travel lanes. Um, this would get to a 27 foot wide street and that's a typical residential street. That's the uh, most narrow street that you can do and still meet fire code without special accommodations uh, for fire hydrants or turnarounds, things like that. So if you go below 27 feet on a public street, um, you have to make special accommodations to meet the fire code. So 27 feet, fire trucks can still use the street. This, uh, and to take some of that pedestrian uh, function that would have been used in the bike lanes, you know, uh, joggers or walkers that may be on the street. We've added a five foot sidewalk and this is all being done within that existing 50 foot right of way, which still leaves about two feet, foot and a half to two feet from the sidewalk to that right of way. We can scrunch everything in. So you still have your 25 feet of driveway between your property line and the structure and a little bit of overhang. Uh, until you get to the sidewalk. So that's our first option, 27 foot street. Uh, and we're kind of flipping back between the uh, existing right of way. And now our third op or sec second option uh, would be look at something like a 32 foot wide street. And the reason why we would look at a 32 foot wide street uh, is just for that additional buffer uh, that would leave a, a 10 foot travel lane on either side. Um, you would have about a five and a half foot buffer outside of those travel lanes to give a little bit extra room for backing out of driveways. Uh, when you look at something like this, this is getting closer to a collector street width. Our current street that we have in the design is 36 feet. So it's taking four feet out of that street width. Uh, it improves your fire access. Uh, it allows for things like uh, maybe some parking on the street uh, we haven't really discussed that with Richard, but once you get down to a, about a 27 foot wide street, it's really difficult to park on more than one side of the street. Uh, 32 may allow uh, some more flexibility with the parking. 
we're still showing the two five foot sidewalks, one on either side of the street. And that pushes that sidewalk out to the property line. So right out, you know, we're pushing that right out to what the city owns. Uh, you get into a situation in, in these instances where there would be some temporary construction easement, uh, maybe five feet from the property line. And that would be for grading, for making the transitions. Just if the existing and new roadway elevations don't work out, there'd be some grading um, and new sod in the yards. Uh, as far as existing trees, that sort of thing, if there's existing trees that are within the right of way, um, if they're in the roadway, they, they need to go away. If they were maybe conflicting with a sidewalk, like they're right on the right of way line, we could move that sidewalk in a little bit. Uh, in this instance, we'd have about a four foot planting strip. And so you have some room to move that sidewalk around to miss trees. If they were say in a temporary construction easement uh, and our intention was to remove them, we can try to make accommodations outside of that tree or if it's the owner's uh, preference just to have that tree taken down since there would be fill placed around it as part of the negotiation for the temporary construction easement. So that's our second option, flipping back where we started with and option three sticks with the 32 foot wide street. We pull those uh, sidewalks into the back of the curbs. There's no planting strip or grass between the sidewalk and the back of the curb, still with the five and a half foot buffer and 10 foot travel lanes in the street. That helps pull that uh, travel lane in to slow those cars down. A wider lane kind of gives a uh, motorist the, the feeling they could drive a little faster on the road. Um, still maintains that 25 feet from the structure to the existing right of way, but that sidewalk's pulled in a little bit. The reason we don't see sidewalk put on the back of curb is really that pedestrian safety. If you have that green space, it, it prevents someone maybe walking um, next to the curb. I mean, there's we have a buffer. There's a lot of distracted drivers out there. There are driveways out here. Um, so if someone is parked to the sidewalk and is maybe backing out, if there's a pedestrian, uh, someone who veers in the roadway, it's just, uh, it's not an ideal case to have a sidewalk right on the back of curb. That buffer, it helps with the aesthetics and it helps with some pedestrian safety and keeping people away from the travel lane. And so we put together these options and this matrix that we really worked on, if we kind of uh, go back to where we started in, in our design philosophy and where we're going to uh, make considerations for uh, the existing property, for the traffic flow, and then user groups, this kind of gives you an idea of, of where we're accommodating people and where we're not. That existing um, street is narrow. Um, there's not room for parking on the street right now. You do have some additional width in your driveway. So that existing street doesn't provide that extra space uh, for backing out, not really safe for um, pedestrians or cyclists with a very narrow roadway. Uh, it does help slow traffic that's true, but it really only accommodates the vehicular users. You know, so our proposed with the 55 foot right of way, the driveway impacts are biggest, our biggest detriment. We've heard that. Uh, we understand the, the need to, to have that additional driveway uh, length in these areas. So we start looking at our other three options. Of course, uh, option one was a more narrow street uh, that limits uh, the backing out uh, and safety on your on the street when you're using your own property uh, does help to slow traffic um, and uh, accommodates the the vehicle vehicular and the pedestrian users that bicycle again we're removing that as a priority from our designs given the proximity to the power line trail so option two uh, that goes to the water street the 32 feet um, you know that has uh, the least red x's as far as uh, these new three options. Uh, it, we don't address the bicycle pedestrians, but we give, or the bicycle users, but we give a little more extra room in the driveways and provide that buffer on the side of the street. And then of course, option three is again, the 32 foot wide street, but with the sidewalk uh, on the back of curb, which, um, it, you know, that we have a green check for the pedestrian. I was kind of thinking if we could make that kind of a neutral, it, it's one of those things you have a sidewalk, but uh, being safe and being comfortable 
uh, is really what we're focusing on for those pedestrians when they're using the sidewalk. And so kind of I'll run through quickly. This is just south of Short Hill. Um, if, if, if you live south of Short Hill or Cherry, uh, your lots generally face north and south, whereas north of Cherry, uh, your lots front the street. So it's a little different condition where there's a more narrow setback on those lots, but they would have an option for entering uh, to a driveway or access, um, uh, accessing their property from a, a, a cross street. So that's the existing where there's maybe about an eight foot planting strip uh, with the proposed, we'd go down to maybe a, a six and a half. Um, so if you go, you, you have about a five and a half, uh, a little bit more. So you maybe lose a, a foot or two of your planting strip, but you have a sidewalk there on your side lot. Uh, so you're talking about a matter of feet. And then looking at our options when we're south of Short Hill. Uh, again, this is a review of where we are. The existing again, south of Short Hill. Um, option one, you'd maintain that eight foot planting strip and still have about two feet before you get to the sidewalk. This is again the 20 foot, uh, 27 foot street with a planting strip where you could have trees or landscaping. Um, and we can look at the other ones as well. For the um, option two, uh, this is going to a wider street literally no effect on that outside planting strip. We're working in that 50 foot right away. You have a wider buffer. So backing out uh, of your driveway uh, it is a little bit more safe still with a sidewalk out at the property line and maintain that eight foot strip that would be from the building set back to the property line. Um, and south, south of Short Hill option four, we'll take a look. Marty advances to option three. Option three, I'm sorry. Yeah. And so that puts the sidewalk at the back of curb. Uh, and so we still have a, the eight foot preserved and about a three foot uh, additional green space between the property line in the si and the sidewalk that's within the right of way. And that again, just has our, our kind of matrix review. Option one being the 27 foot wide street with two sidewalks. Option two being the 32 foot wide street with sidewalks and a, a buffer between the sidewalk and the street and option three being two sidewalks uh, at the back of curb. And so some of those other items that we've heard, uh, as far as the drainage design, we follow the accepted methodology that's in the Sherwood drainage ordinance. So we'll look at the areas that are draining to each one of the new street inlets and consider the additional um, width of the street and how much runoff is generated by each of those areas. So um, our plan has new inlets, new piping to replace the open ditches. But when we're laying out those inlets and routing those pipes, we look at where the existing drainage is going. So instead of taking uh, large areas and concentrating them, we separate those and maintain the existing drainage outlets along the street. Um, those inlet throats and openings are sized to get the water off the street to, to make it passable if there is a downpour. Um, and then we build into our design overland flow paths so an inlet does get clogged. Um, the water is able to pass down the street to another inlet where you just would flood at the inlet rather than creating a large pond that goes over the curb or uh, into a driveway or something like that. So we have a full drainage design. The pipes are adequately sized. Uh, regarding the channel or ditch that's being crossed uh, to the north of Barbara, there's um, a bridge design. It's a precast concrete bridge that's been sized to handle the 100 year flow, so 1% uh, flow to pass that water through there. Uh, it, it spans about 40 feet total. like we've locked up. Yeah. <clears throat> Brad, something's frozen on us. We'll try to get it going here in a moment. Okay. Julie, can you hear?
I can hear you guys. Brad, yeah, we, we're um, we're doing okay with everybody, but uh, Brad and Julie right now. So in this moment, I tell you what, we'll get back to Brad and Julie here in just a moment. It seems we may have lost a, a connection. Hopefully that'll be restored in just a moment. Um, there's a lot of information in the diagrams that you've seen and in the matrix that Brad presented. If you will, following the meeting, please go back to our website and uh, find this information and uh, study it. And please, we're getting a lot of comments in the chat column. Thank you very much. Please continue to send those comments. Uh, some of them, uh, one that I saw mentioned four-way stops, certainly can take a look at that. One that I saw was do nothing. And this, oddly enough, is always one of the options for any major public project. Do nothing is actually required in some of the water and wastewater projects if we were uh, pursuing something like that. So to say do nothing, to, to consider that, yes, that is a good question. At this point, uh, the do nothing can be addressed somewhat by the master street plan and the fact that Hemp Hill has been shown connecting through to Maryland for about 20 years. I know it's been talked about for a long time, nothing's been done, and I'm sure that's comforting that nothing has been done uh, until now, but as far back as 2018 in the sales tax uh, initiative when information was being shared uh, through the Chambers of Commerce and having uh, the individual meetings uh, to explain the different projects. Uh, Hemp Hill was in that list of projects then. And so it is important from a connection standpoint, and there will be some uh, conveniences or benefits uh, if you happen to leave your home and want to go to Maryland, hang a left, go to Oak Brook, hang a right, go to Johnson, hang a left, then you can be to the middle school or to the public library, the new uh, Amy Sanders uh, library on Johnson, or you'd just be at the intersection there, a 107 to cross over to DJ Hudson to the sports complexes. So there, there are some conveniences here that would, you know, in some times, occasionally, you'd find that it's convenient to use that north access to Maryland rather than having to get out onto Keel. So we know things are going to change, and we know that the change is going to bring problems. But we hope that this type of meeting that we're having and the discussions we're having, and by you submitting your comments, that it makes sure that we don't miss an opportunity to address any problem that we can predict or that we can think of before uh, we get into it. Now, I know that there was one particular question asked, I believe, in an email. Uh, this past week had to do with the curb design, the rollback curb. In fact, David may have been the one that mentioned it to me. Um, there are two types of design. A curb that stands straight up is, is called a, the stand-up curb, and they are very difficult to drive over. But the rollback is one that has a softer uh, back to it so that you could actually drive across that uh, to get into your yard. And that's what is typical in a local street design in most neighborhoods. Uh, someone else mentioned in the chat I saw just happened to catch uh, developments on Brockington. Uh, why does the city continue to allow developments on Brockington? Well, we have a planning commission and its purpose is to review developments and to make sure that they fit with the plans, the general plans of the city, that they fit the zoning, that they fit the land use. And all of these plans are uh, documents that are produced uh, after they've had public hearings. So there's, there's always opportunity for public input on these, but the main reason for developments on Brockington is that the property owner has made the choice to develop the property that they own. So the city does not develop properties. It's people who own property who decide they want to develop and they have money to invest and they produce plans 
and all of those have to be reviewed and, and approved by uh, the city through the planning commission and uh, through the city engineer's office. Brad, are you back with us? Yes, I'm back. Sorry, we had a little internet hiccup here. At the right. office, I think. Is there something else that you'd need to uh, to say, or is there something that Julie, Julie, would you like to comment on the? I know that that uh, Craft and Toll has been selected by the city to produce our new bike and pedestrian master plan, and Julie is integral to that. She's uh, actually leading that. So, would you like to comment on the? necessity of the bike lanes, the appropriateness of it, and how the uh, power line trail may help to mitigate that. Yeah, <clears throat> you know, we've, we've had a lot of conversations about with the adoption of Vision 2040, the new, uh, the new comprehensive plan that was adopted last December, um, and the implementation of that comprehensive plan. Um, Hempel Road is, it, you know, what, what's trying to happen here is, is how to accommodate that connection and that, and that pedestrian connection as well, uh, while, while understanding that this is a street that's going through an existing neighborhood. And so with the addition of the power line trail to your east, that is really um, a fantastic opportunity uh, to accommodate alternative transportation. Uh, but at the same time, we do recognize that with this street's increased connectivity, um, the importance of the sidewalks to accommodate um, pedestrians and in particular children um, along the street and to give a place for them uh, to be accommodated is, is of particular importance. And the ability for folks in the neighborhood to be able to circulate to that trail once it is completed um, along those sidewalks and then along uh, the east-west streets that would then connect uh, Hemp Hill and the neighborhoods along it to that power line trail. I think over the next several years, as that trail comes online, you will see an increase in pedestrian traffic in the neighborhoods. So we wanna be sure that the street um, is accommodating the residents and it's accommodating connectivity and it's accommodating pedestrians as well. So, uh, you know, the options that are generated are really trying to investigate how to accommodate each one of those things. We understand that each one of those options comes some trade-offs. And so I think that's why we're, we're kind of back here at the table uh, with everyone to get some feedback on that. Um, thank you, Julie. I just saw another comment in our chat column uh, regarding the company I mentioned, and I believe you're referring to OR Colon. Uh, ORC is the uh, consultant that will be uh, taking care of right-of-way acquisition and the temporary construction easements. Now, a temporary construction easement is where we it's not part of the actual uh, street improvements or the sidewalk, but it is part of blending those improvements back to your yard. In other words, if we need to put in some fill dirt, or if you have lost use of the driveway for parking and there is a need that you have to, and you have room to double the width of your driveway, these are things that you can discuss one-on-one -on -one with a representative of OR Colon. Now, the, the chat column mentioned that you'd attempted to get a hold of them and they had not uh, contacted you. Uh, where we are today is that we're changing the design. So we're changing 52 documents that were already prepared to ask you for additional right-of-way. We're not gonna do that now. We're gonna back up and we're gonna refigure this to stay within the existing 50 foot right of way, but we will need to speak with each of you individually regarding the temporary construction easement. So at the proper time, which is gonna to be toward the end of January, I would think, is about the earliest that I can, can think we would be doing this, someone from OR Colon will be contacting you and talking with you individually about your particular a home and your driveway and how it fits into the project. So please don't, uh, don't worry, we're not gonna forget you. We're going to get to everyone, but it will take a little time for us to make changes to those documents to have something to discuss. And we want to give a couple of weeks for you all to get your comments in through the website or to write us a letter and mail it to us. So we'll be 
waiting until the second week of January. We'll be summarizing all of these comments. We'll be looking at how each of you placed importance on either option one or option two or option three. Uh, and if you, when we look at that, we'll see what is more appropriate according to the folks that actually live there. And then we'll go back and we'll make a decision and then we'll present this to the city council for their consideration to approve the modified collector design because it's not a standard design. So to approve the modified design and to authorize moving ahead with it. So there's, there's gonna be some more options uh, or opportunities for you to hear about what's being proposed and for you to see that and certainly for you to be individually contacted uh, before we actually get into the construction period. Um, we do have about five minutes left and I, I wanna begin with uh, David because David, you've heard uh, the information presented by uh, Kraft and Toll, uh, Brad and Julie, what they've had to say. And I want to first ask, do you feel like you've had all of your questions answered? Is there something you did not hear that you'd like for us to, to touch on right quickly? Um, I think one thing, uh, of course, they mentioned the uh, pop-up curves versus the rollback roll, roll back or the you know rollover. Um, you know, that I think that's going to be necessary you know a big deal so we can kind of get up on that into our drive and parking in the yard whatever um another thing is uh as far as clarity on being able to street park along the street making sure we can do that because it's going to be necessary i mean i've got to actually have a picture right here and that was my yard on the holidays and i mean we you know you're still going to need extra parking yes either. sir so yes. i mean i think we need that clarity that are we going to be able to access that, that street for parking alongside of it? Another thing too, um, I think if I understood him correctly, he said uh, option, uh, you know, the, I think the current option was kind of, you know, right now pulling out, there was some, you know, the street not being that wide, there was some concerns about that and some of this would make it better. I think our concerns right now is opening this up to offload some of that from Brockington. We're going to have more traffic people coming through there makes it really challenging right now. I mean, it's dead end, so we don't have that problem. Yes. But I think there's still concerns of many uh, with traffic coming through there like that. You know, uh, it's, it's going to increase traffic through there. Yes, well. And so we're kind of concerned about that being just to be able to get out safely into the street. And what can we do about that? Uh, one of those options that had the 32 feet uh, wide uh, showed the two or three foot buffer uh, that was striped. You had the 10 foot lanes and then you had some buffer area. Uh, when you get to the one where it had the five and a half foot buffer, that accommodates more on street parking more frequently. Now, to design the street to actually park on the street all the time by everyone would mean we're back to that 36 feet or wider, which is getting back to really getting into your driveway. So we're limited on what we can do. And if you would like to, you know, be sure you go through these options again, but the option, uh, this option two on the 32 foot wide street, and that shows the five and a half foot buffer. Now the 10 foot lane is striped and that makes people who are driving have a feeling of narrowness, which helps them to keep their speeds down. But that five and a half feet allows you room to park and, the concerns that we have from the city is we don't want the mailbox to be blocked. We don't want your garbage can to be blocked from being able to pick those services. Uh, when you get the curb and gutter, of course, now I guess the, the leaf pickup is really good because they're getting the ditches clean. But uh, even with the curb and gutter, you'll have leaves that uh, during leaf pickup, we need access. And also for the fire trucks, we, we know that uh, fire access is important. So with the garbage trucks or the fire apparatus, either one, they're wide. And if there's parking on both sides and the street's not wide enough, uh, you have to cross that center line and uh, you have the oncoming traffic issue. So there's just a lot of issues with parking on the street if we don't think about it ahead of time. 
and the 32 foot option is getting into that width where it's more reasonable to think about on street parking than it is on the 27 foot. You get more driveway with the 27, you get a better parking situation on the street with the 32. So everybody needs to think about these things individually uh, and study them out. Is there mm -hmm. something else? We've got about another minute. We've got a city council meeting starting at six o'clock. Uh, the council will, will need to be uh, assembling now and I need to get to that meeting as well. Uh, any final words you'd like to offer, David? Um, well, I mean, it's obvious, you know, uh, it's, it's going through, and I think we just need to work to try to figure out what's going to work best yeah. in our neighborhood for the, for the residents. So, um, everybody yeah. about what we've seen, what we heard, and you know, everybody kind of get out there and we can talk about this and get some more input. And at the same time, continue to send your responses in uh, to the city, uh, you know, as they've allotted the opportunities and have places you can turn it in and let them know what your thoughts are. Continue to let them know your thoughts and input on this. If you see Craft and Toll out there again with their survey crews placing the right-of-way stakes, they will be moving those back to the existing 50 feet that the city owns uh, that's been, that was dedicated to the first plat was 1953. So that that's quite a while ago. Thank you all so much. I sincerely apologize for not having two or three hours to be able to just continue to talk and visit. Uh, we are limited, but please send us your comments on emails and in the mail and visit with uh, Mr. Barnes or Mr. Gibbs or your alderman. And uh, we'll, we'll take your comments very seriously. Thank you very much and have a good evening.